Philippines is rich in biodiversity, it is prudent to engage in bioprospecting. It is defined as a systematic and organized search for useful products derived from bioresources, including plants, microorganisms, animals, etc., that can be developed further for commercialization, pharmaceutical value, and overall benefits of the society. The proposed research and development institute will be located in Tanay Rizal. It will focus on the exploration of natural resources that could be developed into commercially valuable products. The proposal aims to provide responsible approaches and methods in accumulating or yielding of our natural resources. This proper procedures will help us collect data needed for research, develop products and innovations that generate income to boost the economy, all done while conserving our very own rich biodiversity in the country. The Problem Lack of modern research institutes that focuses on herbal and drug tracks, and Filipino scientists tend to practice their expertise abroad. Project objective to provide a workplace for scientists of studies, bioprospecting, and to give them recognition in the science and technology field. Design concept Flora, or commonly known as plants, is all the plant life present in a particular region or time, generally the naturally occurring native plants. Life comes from our plants as they provide us the fresh air we need to breathe. But they also serve many other purposes for us, like heat reduction, shade from the sun, food bearer, and especially heals us with the medicinal herbs. The project had imitated the shape of a plant in its site planning to conform with the vast landscape of the area and to complement with main function of the project, which is bioprospecting. With the minimalist style of modernism blended to harmonize with its surrounding landscapes and the usage of neutral colors as to highlight the greenscapes of the site. Form concept. A stair. A stair is where we take a series of steps or flights to reach one level to another. Precisely represents a research institute where a gradual progressive research are executed to achieve results and accomplishments. Design translation. Adaptive architecture is a multidisciplinary field concerned with buildings that are designed to adapt to their environments, their inhabitants, and objects as well as those buildings that are entirely driven by internal data. To design is to adapt to the natural conditions of the site. As for this development in Tanay Rizal, ecotourism development properly adapts to the conditions of the site and its surroundings as it promotes nature protection, yet it is economical, educational, and it also adapts to the local people within the site, as they would be the guide to the tourists, all done without compromising the environment. While the Bioprospecting Research Institute also adapts by focusing on the primitive plants within the site and to provide a greenhouse plantation, so the materials or the plants that the scientists will be needing are within comfortable reach. Design character. Modern architecture. Emphasis of rectangular forms and horizontal and vertical lines. Use of modern materials and system. Relationship between interior spaces and site. Emphasis on open flowing interior spaces. Generous use of glass and natural light. Use of sun shading to enhance human comfort and open plan interiors. Design philosophy. Form follows function by Louis Henry Sullivan. Functional design, asymmetrical compositions with the use of geometric forms, often with flat roofs and emphasis on horizontal lines. Design considerations includes flexibility, expansion, circulation, aesthetic, orientation, privacy, modernization, and accessibility. Materials used in the development includes insulating glass, structural steel, concrete, polycarbonate skylight, hardwood cladding, and low emissivity glass. Environmental systems. Roof garden rainwater harvesting represents an alternative water supply that captures and stores rainwater for later use. The harvesting of rainwater is as simple as collecting water from surface on which rain falls, and subsequently storing this water for later use. Normally, water is collected from building roofs and stored in dedicated water tank. Natural lighting. Natural lighting, also known as daylighting, is a technique that efficiently brings natural light into your home using exterior glazing, thereby reducing artificial lighting requirements and saving energy. Natural lighting has been proven to increase health and comfort levels for building occupants. Highlights Roof gardens A roof garden is essentially a garden on the rooftop of a building. Man-made green spaces on the topmost level of residential and commercial structures. Consisting of different plants, these verdant areas help improve a building's aesthetics. Extensive green roof. A low-maintenance green roof garden that has a thin, light-weighing, growing medium. This type of green roof is characterized by its vegetation, which is often limited to sedums, mosses, herbs, small plants and flowers, desert grasses, and succulents, because it has a growing medium depth of around 3 to 6 inches. 
An extensive green roof is easier to install and cost efficient, and generally doesn't require an irrigation system to survive. It is ideal for stormwater management for flat or low slope roofs and retrofits. Composite floor systems. Composite floor systems typically involve structural steel beams, joist girders, or trusses made composite by shear connectors, with a concrete floor slab to form an effective T-beam flexural member resisting primarily gravity loads. The versatility of the system results from the inherent strength of the concrete floor component and compression and the tensile strength of the steel member. Mechanical systems, the location of main vertical supply or exhaust shafts as well as horizontal ductwork is very crucial in designing a flexible lab. Key issues to consider include efficiency and flexibility, modular design, initial cost, long-term operational cost, building height and massing, and design image. Electrical systems, three types of power are generally used for most laboratory projects. Normal power circuits are connected to the utility supply only, without any backup system. Loads that are typically on normal power include some HVAC equipment, general lighting, and most lab equipments. The site selected is from the highlands of Tanay Rizal, of which features solitary land for conducting researches and away from disturbances of the city. It is also a wide and broad land which can be used for experimenting of applied research in open spaces, plantation for different plant species, and suitable for the activities included for the ecotourism development, and for the exhibition of Philippines' very own natural resources since the site has ecologically rich surroundings. Tanay is a municipality in the landlocked province of Rizal. Tanay is one of the 13 towns. It is becoming an extension of Manila's urbanization along with the city of Antipolo, towns of Cainta, Angono, Taytay, and Binangonan. Sampaloc is a barangay in the municipality of Tanay. Its population as determined by the 2015 census was 30,341. The site has a lot area of 229,011.18 square meter or 22.9 hectares. This lot is in irregular shape and has a slope percentage between 10 to 13 percent but it's still buildable. The site would approximately take one and a half hour of travel time if you're coming from Quezon City. Site Diagrams The site is zoned as follows. The ecotourism development, parking, local community area, greenhouse plantations, accommodations, research buildings, and the future development. Site Analysis From the western part of the site is where the neighbor's road is available, which also gives the noise and the possible entrance to the research institute and ecotourism development. The research institute will be positioned in the southwestern part of the site, which is the highest point of elevation, and to fully maximize the benefits of the sunrise from the east, the northwest and southeast monsoon. Vehicular and pedestrian circulation. The site uses a grid type of planning system in its road networks to utilize the rectangular shape of the site and to its parallel spaces inside. Site slope diagrams. This shows the topography and the developed site being placed into the map. Master Development Plan, Scale, Not to Scale Ecotourism entrance is available at the northeastern part of the site, while the Research and Development Institute entrance is located in the southeastern part where the nearest road network is available. As you access the site, you'll be welcomed by the Ecotourism Development and some of its public spaces includes the parking, amphitheater, camping site, and the greenhouse plantations. On the middle part of the site, from east to west, is where the flora and fauna farm, eco park, butterfly garden, and the fish farms are located. Lastly, on the western part of the site is where the accommodations, laboratories, and the research and development buildings are positioned, along with the future development. The ecotourism building is the one that provides admission and caters the tourists and the development. It uses neutral colors of white and wood to conform with the surrounding green environment of the site. Ecolodge 1 is a single mezzanine bedroom accommodation with kitchen, dining, living area, toilet and bath, and balcony, and is able to lodge 2 to 3 visitors. Ecolodge 2 is a 3 bedroom accommodation with kitchen, dining, living area, toilet and bath, a veranda, and is able to lodge 4 to 6 visitors in the ecotourism development. Research laboratories layout uses a horizontal space type of planning as it is essential in most labs to prioritize the corridors on every laboratory spaces whether on support or auxiliary. Two types of labs are the wet and dry laboratory. The wet laboratory, defined as laboratories where chemicals, drugs, or other material or biological matter are tested and analyzed requiring water, direct ventilation, and specialized pipe utilities. While a dry laboratory space is specific to work with dry stored materials, electronics, and or large instruments with few pipe services. The laboratories defined by the space type are analytical laboratories that may require accurate temperature and humidity control, dust control, and clean power. 
Research and Development Building consists of two-story and a roof deck with the skylight that brings natural ventilation to the interior of the building. The ground floor consists of mostly public spaces, employees quarters, and common spaces for the visitors of the development, for like the showroom and library. The second floor includes the office spaces for the employees and offices for the key personnel of the Research and Development Building. Lastly, the roof deck of the building, the highest point of elevation throughout the site, where visitors can amuse the magnificent view of the serene nature of the Nairisal, along with the development.